let's go for the uh, the pencil first of all. I think this is already ah uh, yes. It's already been out. There we go. The pencil has it. I do love Apple. And I uh, as everybody probably knows, my company's in all to do with Apple repairs and spares and stuff like that, so I'm bound to. But even that packaging, I mean, that, that's fantastic. Not going anywhere. Looks quite minimalist. And for that, and it releases this looking Apple Pencil. Obviously, this has been out a little while, so um, and I've, I've loved to... Uh, I know it didn't work for the iPad Air 2, so there's no point getting it, but um, I can't wait to use that uh, as it's obviously massively hyped up. And then the iPad Pro, here we go. Again, packaging is tremendous. And there we go. So what I've done is I've gone for the so it's the it's the, the same size as my Air 2. I didn't fancy the larger one just for sort of ease of transporting around. I need to work on the go between the companies, so um, it, it helps to be on the go. Again, fairly minimalist box. You've got the profile of the iPad Air Pro there with a the little camera sticking out. Apparently, it's supposed to be about the same size as this, um, but the fact that it's got the 6s camera. Uh, equivalent so that's uh, it'll protrude a little bit and I've got the 128 gig version which is the middle size because I think it's 32 128 256 gigabytes so I'm, I'm in the middle because 32 gigs is not enough that's a 64 and I've got about five gig left so uh, they didn't do a 64 which is a shame so I've gone for 128 um, pricey yeah but I uh, hope this is gonna pay off so the iPad Pro 9.7 inch Wi-Fi only because to be honest I never see the point in going for the 3G version purely because I just pair it to my iPhone wherever I am and, and just I use the yeah the tinter webs that way I just pair it up that way I, I don't see the you know the use for the additional um, cost of the 3G version but then you know it fits some people's use it, it doesn't on others so yeah so I don't go for the 3G versions I go for the Wi-Fi only um, and uh, yeah, just pair it to my iPhone, it's dead easy to do. Absolutely beautifully packaged as per usual. Um, the one thing, but it's just it's just nice. It really is. Um, really impressed, but even the cellophane, you know, even the box they come in from the distribution centers or wherever is nice. So uh, lots of care and attention. So let's take this great big chop knife. <laughs> and uh, and remove some of this plastic. My um, I'm I'm a, I'm a purist. No, I'm a perfectionist. But I absolutely love what Apple are about, and I almost take hate taking them out of the box. I like to just stare at them, and look at it for a while. Um, sounds sad. And well, it is sad, but uh, there you go. So let's move my iPad out of the way. One thing that astounds me, and that probably I doubt many people notice this, but I could be wrong, is the fact that Apple have an entire department, and the department's probably massive, um, just dedicated to packaging. And you know what? They dedicate and they work so hard just so that this happens. And it's going to prove me wrong now, isn't it? That's uh, just so that that happens. And all I've done is lift it. And I'm not, and it just, look at that. That is incredible. And it's so many, but I doubt anybody really noticed it apart from me. Um, but yeah, just the fact that the packaging is so neatly done, even the inside of the box is, and you know, all the finishing. It's, you know, Samsung's their biggest competitor, or one of their biggest competitors. They, they work hard to do, you know, they got nice packaging now, but, they still don't work this hard and this attention to detail. My background is Formula One before I got into uh, electronics and, um, and uh, you know, th that's all about perfection. I had uh, many years in, in racing and, and in six years at Red Bull um, in, in Milton Keynes with in form you know, their Formula One team. And, um, you know, I've worked with some incredible tech and 
eye for detail and perfection and work damn hard and, and you know I, the, Apple are like the the you know the mainstream equivalent of Formula One I think they're, they're at the top of the game and just just the way that does that it sounds bizarre and you're like no god just get it to the product but I just love that the fact you just lift it up and they work so hard to make the tolerances on that so that it just lifts out oh, I'm stopping it with my finger the other side it just does that you know the attention to your detail is absolutely immense. Anyway, let's get to the proper bit. Great little tag pulls it up. So now one thing you notice, a lot bigger apple. A lot bigger apple there. There's no nothing that says pro, but that's yeah, that's so much bigger. And obviously the the camera reticle there is, is kind of protrudes a little bit. Ah, oh, that's the other thing is no, it's obviously it's got it's got way it's got speakers on both sides now. Um, I'm doing this on a Saturday morning, so there's my dog outside having a woof. Um, so you've got speakers on both ends now, and there's your little uh, the sort of the touch connector that the keyboard links onto, and that self powers the keyboard as well as data transfer as well. So that's a really neat solution, and um, the other volume buttons and pretty much like the the air and yeah the fingerprint button as well in the box what we have fairly standard issue charger I imagine that underneath there you've got the little lightning cable as well and again it just fits so nicely and um, does anybody ever open these should really let's have a look a nice little Startup guide and your yeah, staple Apple stickers in the back. Oh, our little guide, iPad, oh, iPad info. It's just beautifully packaged. Uh, just astonish me every time. Makes the feeling of spending all that money worthwhile. And that's without even turning the thing on. So there we have the iPad Pro and the Pro itself. Again, I don't like taking this cover off. <laughs> if I could keep it on there, I would. So yeah, we noticed that the Apple's much bigger. I've gone for the Space Gray version. You've got a couple of little little microphones up there, one there, and one next to the camera, if you can see that. My camera angle's not that fantastic. Um, I need a new tripod. And a lightning connector there with the two speakers, and then the top, you've got the speakers. Uh, they're a little bit more outboard. Um, that's probably because on the 3G versions, the antenna for the 3G actually actually goes in the middle there, so that's probably why they're there. Um, put that back in. And now we have the pencil. Again, absolutely beautifully boxed. Um, I've not seen one of these for real, so let's open this up. Kind of feels a bit like Christmas uh, for me. Can't wait to get the keyboard as well. That looks pretty, uh, pretty impressive. Obviously, it's like impressive money as well. Um, but yeah, hopefully this will, this will all work really nicely together. So again, beautifully packaged. Let's move the knife out of the way. You've got the Apple pencil there on the box. Even that, even the printing on there is beautiful. And a little pour do for that. It's like, like the Apple Watch, which I don't have. Um, okay, so that's pretty cool. So you've got the, I'm assuming, a little uh, hey, lightning cable adapter. So you can plug that straight in into your iPad to charge it and sync it but you've also got the adapter where you can charge it off of a cable as well so it's just like a female to male to female or whatever and then a spare tip that's pretty cool and a load of instructions and the pencil itself what's the first impressions of that that is nice that's about the same weight as a it's a fractionally heavier than, a, a, I reckon, a pencil, or slightly heavier than a, like a big biro. 
very nice the little cap at the end apparently these are quite easy to lose i can see how that would be um even that just clips in how do they do it i swear the attention to detail is incredible um like no other and there's the apple pencil and it's got a little clear cover there with the apple pencil take the clear cover off now have it just feels nice I'm not biased I love Apple stuff but hey guilty pleasures and all that and there's the apple pencil so uh, we'll soon get into uh, the actual workings of the iPad Pro but initially yeah, heavy weight wise what's it like compared to the iPad uh, to yeah, they're about the same. They feel about the same. Yeah. I was expecting it to be a little bit heavier, maybe. No. Um. Do the do. Stick it off. Nice. We've got the fingerprint button there. We we'll power it on. Oh, it feels weird because you can feel the speaker, the speakers up there. Ruff, ruff, ruff. Must be a postman. Uh, yeah, again, the bigger Apple logo. It's just nice. Very nice. Uh, can't wait to use this with the keyboard. Can't, I just can't wait to use this uh, with... With... Um, with everything I need to, um, it's supposed to be pretty special. So um, yeah, I should post a video soon. Get this all synced up. Get this uh, working with everything, and um, yeah, do a follow-up video. Thanks for watching. So folks, here we go. Uh, the last part of the unboxing, and this is the smart keyboard that came with the iPad Pro. I'm a bit more awake now. I did the other one on a Saturday morning for the first thing before the kids woke up. While I was off on looking after them for half term, and I'm back in the office. So uh, this is punctually arrived this morning, but earlier than I thought because the the smart keyboard was um, mentioned to have been about two weeks after the iPad Pro was delivered. So it's quite good. Uh, there we go. It's quite weighty. Box. That's about. 6 kilos and to be fair that uh, that is quite a lot uh, this is hugely expensive I mean this is about 120 pounds I think it was which is massive for a case and keyboard but uh, we shall see if it comes up with the goods obviously again massively biased review from me because I'm an Apple, Apple mad nut and um, yeah fantastically wrapped beautifully packaged um, yeah so you got the iPad Pro smart keyboard and it doubles as a case, which is what I've got on my old iPad, iPad Air 2, um, with a keyboard as well. Looks, I must admit, having seen it sort of closed off there, it looks a bit clunky. I'm not sure what I expected because obviously it's got to fit the keyboard in. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway, let's uh, let's have a look at what we have. Let's use one of these ISS modes to open up these plastic. And as I said on my the other unboxings, is the fact that this is uh, I'm rather keen to just appreciate the packaging, which is probably not a lot of people do. I mean, it must mean I'm a I'm an Uber geek, um, but Apple put so much effort into their packaging, I absolutely adore it. See so if that's the usual. Oh, there we go. I use the usual Apple kind of just kind of hold it. Oh, if it's straight, anyway, hold it and it drops out, which is great. Um, there we go, so, ah, oh, that's nice. That's the little inlay, and then you have the usual pull cord. Instruction debris, and nicely, that's nice, a nicely wrapped keyboard. I'm gonna say I hate taking out the wrapper because I love it so much, but needs us. And there we go, you have the Keyboard looks a bit like a smart cover, but obviously with a keyboard there, and it has the three tiny contacts that, that touch onto the uh, 
the iPad Pro themselves, and obviously that transmits data and power, so it's a self-powering keyboard, no need to, well, imagine it. I don't know if it has an on battery or it literally just powers itself as it's attached. Um, we'll find out when we attach it to the iPad to see if it actually works with it detached, but I doubt it will because it's data transmission over there, so it's not going to be a Bluetooth keyboard, so it probably doesn't have a battery either. Again, usual, I mean, they, they, they pitch this having sort of amazing sort of materials used, and to be fair, it, it feels a slight bit different to the, the Apple cover I had for the, um, the Air 2. Um, not too dissimilar. It's got the same sort of makeup with the magnets and the contacts there. And there's the keyboard in there as well. So that's pretty cool. I guess that's where the, the air sits there with the little rubber bumper and the keys immediately feel, oh, it's quite, that's quite a hard plastic, but soft as the key presses are. Um, I was expecting it to be rubberized, but actually that, that feels so much better than a, like a rubber keyboard. Um, but with the kind of rubberized key presses, so it's all sealed. So if you spill your drink on it, you're not going to be crying into your bank account to order another one. And then I guess that doubles as that's the case. Okay, so it's like a little little dog leg in there to allow it to sit flush. Actually, that's that that looks less bulky than the picture. It kind of the picture denotes on the back of here. Um, but we'll see when it goes on the iPad. Um, yeah, that's, that's that's lovely, really nice, and I like the fact that the material they use here. I mean, I've had mine 18 months for my iPad Air, and it gets quite grubby, yet it still remains looking great. And and that and that's when it actually cleans the screen as it's on it, um, which is fantastic because every time you open it with it moving around slightly like it does on the iPad, it kind of just cleans the screen with all your fingerprints. Um, yeah, nice. It feels really good. Looking forward to getting it on the iPad Pro and and, and testing it out. And obviously it doubles as a stand and a, a keyboard and a, and a this and the other. But yeah, nice. So looking forward to using this with the Pro. Could bridge the gap between that and my Mac. So we've had this iPad in the oven, gently warming at about 50 degrees for about 20 minutes. And here's my colleague, he's repairing, I'm doing the voiceover. He's going to start with an ISMO tool, which is a really thin, steel, wicked piece of kit we saw on our site. And he's going to start at the top right, not just because the brake is here, but mainly because there's not so many cables at the top right to worry about. Whereas the main cables for the screens is the bottom left and all the way at the left hand side. I know it doesn't matter too much if you're replacing the screen, but if you're not for some reason, you're changing the battery or something like that, you don't want to be hacking through cables. Again, like we've warmed this in a temperature controlled oven, but you can use um, a heat gun or a hair dryer. But one thing I would say uh, is that if you use those, the chances are that once you're heating the, the front up, you, the, there's a massive metal heat sink, which is called the rear casing, that will just sap all of the heat away. And that's what you don't want. You want the heat going through the glass, through the rear, and getting to that adhesive layer between the glass and the metal. That is really key. Uh, you may feel it feels warm and hot you know, to touch, but it may still be stone cold where the glue is. And that is the important thing. So plenty of time, if you're going to put it somewhere warm, even if it's just a 20 degrees or 25 degrees airing cupboard, anything like that, you need that heat soak. So this, you know, I can't really emphasize that enough. You need that glue getting warm. So here he is, the ISESMO is a, is a, a fantastic bit of kit. Um, tools and um, parts, appleipodparts.com. And there's even a discount for YouTube users. There's a 10% discount if you check out the uh, the message below the description. So here we go. As Damien is using his one his left hand to gently lift the 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 glass whilst also plying away with the tool, and it's just helping lift the adhesive, just break that seal um, as he goes around. Now, what we would normally do is probably spin the iPad all around the desk as we're using it, but we're trying to keep it on camera here, um, just so you guys can watch what we're doing. As we go along here, now he's making sure that he doesn't put the tool in too far. He's done hundreds of these, so he knows what he's doing. But as you go in, you want to go in about four mil, but be really careful when you get to susceptible areas where, such as the home button here, 
um, you know there's a cable under there so you've just been extra careful and you've also got the Wi-Fi cable in there that you don't really want to be hacking through you want to make sure you want to go between the glass uh, and the cable and not underneath the cable again it is all about taking your time and making sure it's warm if it's cooling down because it's taking a while put it back in the oven or, or reheat it or heat mat or whatever you've got to do but just take your time he's instead of going right underneath the home button he's gone to the other side of the home button and carried on plying but again there's a home button cable that he's pointing out here that runs all the way along there really thin cable it's a trip wire if you've ever seen one um, and it's easy to break so you really don't want to be going through that that's why we started at the top right and gone down so you can hopefully if you just need to stop and keep looking and see see the cable under there and just again not putting the steel tool too far in with his left hand he's pulling away at the adhesive just for that little bit of assistance but what he's not doing is opening it up like a book because that will start snapping cables so once we got to that bottom left hand corner we're going to go all the way back around to the top right and carry on along the top and again you've got the camera there so be careful taking your time rewarming it if you need to um, but yes literally taking your time to to sort of just gently kind of side through the adhesive that's what you're looking to do glass everywhere so be careful guys make sure you're wearing gloves or you know what you, this chap he's done so many still doesn't mean that glass won't cut him but the predominant hand that's going to be touching the screen he's got a glove on and he's also you need to wear safety specs as well for anything that flies around so I can't emphasize enough, we can get the parts, appleipodparts.com. The description holds the link to the parts for the iPad 4. Um, and everything that we use in here, you'll see the tools, the different adhesive we use. Um, you know, really is a bit of an inside look into what we do. And as per usual for all my old videos, is I don't like to cut footage. It has to be real time. If you think I'm wobbling on, or you know what you're doing on this bit, just skip forward to the next bit. Um, but I don't like to cut anything out because I really like to show you guys exactly what goes on from start to finish um, there's plenty of videos out there that will cut bits out and they may not think they're important but they could be the difference between you you know destroying a component or even permanently damaging the iPad it is a messy job but it's all about taking your time as you can see the little camera bracket has come out that locates the camera and the glass he's uh, put that to one side you want to keep that so again you heat that up and take the glue and the adhesive off we'll keep that and if the screen that you have doesn't come with it on you can transfer it I think a lot of our screens do come with it on but uh, it all depends on what batch we have so we still uh, this is really messy if you've only got a couple of cracks then this will be darn sight easier and like I said stick it back in the uh, in the source of heat gently warm it up again you don't want to go silly temperatures because that will start damaging the battery and things but you know 45 50 degrees um, and you know a nice gentle waft over with a heat gun all the way around the outside and again make sure that the bottom bottom part is is normally you know is just yeah the the rear casing is warm because that's going to sap the heat out of it so the more you heat it then it's going to disappear so I've gone like the bottom this is where he's trying to sort of gently open it like a book from the top um, but also not just not forcing it um, just literally top and bottom gently easing the adhesive away from it making sure that there's no damage to any cables or any sensors or any cameras or anything um, yeah risk take your time there we go as she opens up again now she opens up like a bit there's the home button cable there is the trip wire so you can quite easily hack through that or even break it and uh, you know it's just it's just misery and there's the Wi-Fi cable there so it's a flat cable and you can easily end up going underneath it or cutting through it with your tool so you've got to make sure that you go over the top of it between the adhesive and the glass and this uh, as you can see all the way around here there's bits of glue and bits of adhesive stuck on uh, Damien here is going to uh, we're going to show you what we do but we're going to clean the clean the glue off of the metal because that stops us from sticking it down and making a great bond but we're also you know it removes all shards of glass um, we've got a little flat spatula tool again you can get it on our website uh, apple ipod parts 
Facebook.com and as he works through again go slower than this chap he's done hundreds and hundreds of these um, because there's there's all on hold uh, little sneaky cables and sensors and and chips that you really don't want to be sort of knocking off some things you might even not know um, about so just go easy there's no there's no harm in just sort of gently going under just lifting the glass gently to have a look underneath it you can see there and I'll mark this there's a chip to be aware of um, and that's like the, the, the sort of the sensing chip that's quite easily to dip into and knock it off um, you really don't want that uh, it is key that you get the glass off and every now and again wipe the table of the glass into the bin um, because that would just you risk scratching stuff so here he is he's removing the LCD screen there's four screws one in each corner there you go and put them in a little tray uh, again you can get those on our website or just just somewhere that you know that they're not going to be if you happen to knock the table they're not going to disappear across the floor so the four screws four sort of Phillips screws hex head screws uh, not hex sorry cross head screws in each corner and that holds the LCD screen in place now this then lifts up the similar way to the glass touch screen because then the cables again as you look at it are on the left hand side um, again don't force it it should just gently lift up we're using to get under where the home button is that's probably the easiest place to just get under there once you've got it lift it gently up out of the way try not to touch the screen as it is it's quite prone to scratching and under there are the actually three clasp connectors that connect one for the LCD and a and a double connector for the touch screen so put that to one side have a bit of a desk clear up again make sure you're using gloves for all this this glass is super sharp can can really do some sort of damage and get stuck in your skin it's awful um, uh, clear up the desk it stops it from scratching the rear casing as well so it's kind of just a good a good uh, habit to get into we're using anti-static mat there the gray mat is anti-static connected to to um, you know to ground the device so there's no static damage again you've got to be ultra careful about that making sure you ground yourself to the device by touching the rear casing at the very least before you go inside it um, because any invisible static damage can kill your iPad and you'll never know why um, yeah so again we take all the precautions um, so there's the LCD, a bit of glass on it, but what you shouldn't do is try and rub it off right now because you can just scratch the LCD and that's awful. Um, so here are the clasp connectors, a little bit of tape on each piece, a little bit of black tape. So my colleague is, uh, again, resting the LCD at a 90 degree angle just over. And those bits of tape, you see the little black rectangles there just holding the cable into the connector. Can use the tweezers to peel those off. Again, I, I guess the uh, the Mark One fingers are the uh, the taller choice here. Oh no, and the tweezers. Um, just like the Mark One eyeball is is perfect tool for making sure that you don't make a massive hash of it. So there you go. What happens is though those connectors they ping up with a little bezel from the inside of the iPad and the cable along here is just there's a general bit of glue underneath it and you just you just got to take your time to just lift it away from from it's stuck to the actual digitizer cable underneath just a gentle sort of lifting motion again take your time take more time than he's taking he's done so many of these the bezel when you're flicking up the catch upwards just be so careful because they're easy to break so easy to break and the same with these two the little there's a little plastic bar on the back of each one so you remove the tape and this you just get underneath the black plastic bar just a little bit in the middle if you can and gently lever it up and it springs up um, but as long as I can't emphasize how careful you have to be so you just under there flick flick take more time than Damien he's a professional um, and then the cables will ease out but don't just if you have to force it then just don't. The home button cable here is stuck into the uh, the chassis with a little bit of glue in the corner. So again, lifting that up 
will prevent any further damage. But we're going to leave the home button where it is and actually remove it from the digitizer which we'll show in a minute because it's always good to, to reuse that original button. Some screens come with them on, again it all depends on what batch. So the digitizer cable is a little bit of general bit of glue that holds it into the bottom and it's a case of lifting that up starting from the bottom working your way to the top and then pulling the connector out uh, at 90 degrees to the the little flick up bezels that you do it pulls it just pulls gently out and underneath we go with the ISSMO again wicked thin tool that you can find on our site between the glass and the two little pads either side of the home button watching the cable they lift up and then peeling the cable again take more time than Damien he's a trained professional peeling the glue back again warming it up if you need to taking your time and off that goes and then the ISS mode goes and literally just freeze the home button from the captivity of the smash glass cleaning the desktop and there we are we have the iPad rear casing and all the guts inside with the home button ready for probably a final clean and a new screen so that's the battery is a massive great battery inside there in fact it's it's probably 75% battery and the rest is circuit board and cables we tap the we tap the iPad upside down to make sure there's no little bits of glue that have gone in between and behind the battery. They can cause chafing, damage the battery. Just It's just not nice. You just shouldn't have it in there. So again, we flip it over. We tap it from corner to corner, top to bottom, diagonals, left to right. Uh, just making sure that all the tiny little bits of glass are out. We There's adhesive all the way on it as like it's just displayed. So, um, you know, it's just a case of make sure the home make sure the you know, you just fiddle with the home button there to make sure that we don't catch the cable using that flat spatula tool on our website of course and just gently going all the way around the outer perimeter of the glass and using a razor blade but please don't uh, use that I'm not recommending that but we use it here again he's a trained professional and as you go around just make sure that you don't catch or nick any part of that battery with anything if you need to put a bit of paper over it tape whatever you need to because if you just catch the nick the surface of that battery you're into a world of pain and probably fire um so just but i won't recommend using a razor blade use a flat spatula tool something blunt or even a nice smo um and a little bit of alcohol spray gently in there it just sort of melts the adhesive but again can't emphasize enough please don't use razor blades we are trained professionals don't try this bit at home um, use something that's a little bit less dangerous. And again, as my ethos, I'm not going to cut and shut this bit. You can watch all the way around as uh, my colleague here picks off the glue. The more glue you get off, the cleaner the surface is going to be, which means the better your adhesive bond is going to be. If you've got little bubbles of adhesive, when you lay down the fresh adhesive or you lay down that screen it's going to create high points and all around that high point are going to be bits of glue that aren't going to be touching anything so nigh on useless so not only is your screen going to be ugly and sit off and not flush but it also means that it's going to be prone to lifting if it gets warmed up in your car or in use or in your home there's not you know you haven't got a full bond and that is what you want you want as much bond as possible scraping every bit of glue off getting a little bit of alcohol uh, isopropyl sorry not your whiskey and you know a little bit of a cloth and wiping that surface we always do it anyway to make sure they degrease the surfaces because again finger grease um will stop your glue from sticking and you'll just have a lifting ipad screen which is just horrible all the way around removing all the old glue um yeah I might even insert some music for you so you don't have to constantly listen to me blabbling on.
just going to butt in there. Now mind that home button cable, especially if you're using a scraper around it. You know, kind of put your finger on it. Don't use a razor blade and just uh, make sure that you're kind of scraping around it and not likely to hack through the cable. There's also glue on the back of the home button bracket with the two pads either side. We use a blunt scraper that I'd suggest you use that all the way around the iPad and not the razor blade. I keep saying that. And yeah, just gently rub away the adhesive. You can even use the warmth of your finger and just use your thumb to, to peel it off um, by rubbing it gently. It kind of bubbles up, which is quite good. Um, yeah, so remove the glue off the both sides of those, minding that little, uh, little tiny little button in the middle. Once you're happy that all the glue bubbles are lifted, then spin it over, give it a tap side to side, is what I mentioned earlier, to free up any loose glass in there. Side to side, corner to corner, diagonals, give it a good rattle around to make sure that we've freed up anything. Have a good inspection in there to make sure there's nothing too. So Damien's opened up a little alcohol pouch um, with a cloth. In fact, I'm gonna list those on the site because we have thousands of them. And I might even put a kit together of everything you need for this. Tools, parts, alcohol, cab uh, alcohol cables, alcohol wipes. And we're gonna clean all the way around the outside, make sure there's no bubbles. And, and again, like I said earlier, the alcohol wiping just makes sure that the, the bond is the best it possibly can be. All the way around, so I'd probably use a couple, um, to be honest, to make it all beautifully clean. There we go. The only reason I cut that was because the camera ran out of space. So, all cleaned, ready to go. We're going to move on to the LCD to make sure that this is clean before it goes back in. As you can see, lots of little bits of glass and muck and a bit of adhesive we've got on there as well. Now, this is what Damien is doing here, is just lifting it. What I wouldn't, or really wouldn't recommend, if you're going to wipe it, is literally there's no pressure on that wipe whatsoever. Because as soon as you start putting pressure on it, then that glass will scratch the surface of the LCD and it will look as 
ugly as sin. Make sure that, uh, yeah, lightly wash, uh, brushed away. Have a look all the way around outside. We've got some glue on there we're going to have to clean. And, yeah, just have a good look at, at what's going on. Have a look all around at the outside. Make sure there's no glass in that little bit of foam tape that you can see there. If there is, just kind of flick it off with your fingers. Um, so we'll clean that when it goes into the iPad, just in case we put any finger marks on it. Clear the surface again, and let's start working on the digitizer. Again, AppleIPodParts.com. This is where it comes from. You can see it's got adhesive already on it. The little camera lens is there. It's got a clear, a clear plastic cover over the front. I think we've peeled off. And the cable is it's stuck to the front just because it holds in transit. It holds the cable in a nice position. Peel off that little bit of tape. And we actually remove the adhesive. Now, you don't have to. We do it out of a matter of choice. It's okay. And again, it's, you know, it, it, it's decent enough adhesive, but we prefer to use what I'll show you in a minute is our own um, sort of slightly thicker tape. Um, but yeah, so it's entirely up to you. It, it, you know, they, they come with adhesive on, but we're going to peel it off. The adhesive they use is actually similar to the, the uh, adhesive that Apple use. Um, we just find that it's slightly too thin, and if you do have any slightly bumpy surfaces going on because it's you know it's not it's had a screen on there before just sometimes it can it can struggle to take but again it's okay we peel it off the inside of that where his thumb is now uh, where he's put his hand there is actually a class a, a plastic layer protecting that that is there's two layers there's the outer glass and there's the inner glass and the inner glass is where all the circuit is that and they're, they're sandwiched together um, they, ha they have a clear plastic layer on the inside um, so that's why he's putting his hands all over it knowing full well that once he peels that layer off you know otherwise it would just be the glass and you'd want to not get your fingerprints all over it so peeling the adhesive off we can then make sure that it's clean enough to put our adhesive on see there's a little clear plastic tab for the the layer of the adhesive look we just tend to what we do is we move it over and bend it at 90 degrees so it's sticking up instead of sticking flat just makes life easier when you're laying the new tape down um, it's already stuck up ready for you to grab and peel off before you fit it alcohol wipe all the way around the glass so that the adhesive sticks to the glass and not your oily grease from your fingers or whatever was there before can't emphasize you know it really needs to be a nice nice alcohol alcohol isopropyl whatever um, clean surface otherwise you're just compromising your your bond between the glue no matter how good the glue is if you've got contaminants between that and what you're gluing it to on either surface the glue is next to useless cleanliness is, cleanliness is next to godliness they say now here's the red tape that a lot of people in the industry uses. Um, we sell it on our site in reels. It's fantastic, double-sided, almost gel tape. And it's great for double-sided sticking most things. Um, it's a great size. We've got, I think we've got an eight mil, five mil, and three or two mil. Um, and we, what we do, we, we, we kind of put it in place. Now you can see what we're doing and you can kind of mimic that if you, uh, if you like on yours, or you can stick to the the adhesive that came with it on. What I would probably do is either use this guy to go back and see where it was and wasn't, or take a picture of your screen when it arrives, so you can see where it goes, if you decide to peel it off and use the red stuff, or this stuff, or even your own stuff, but uh, this stuff is really, really good. So we're gonna go all the way along the bottom, all the way down the sides, and all the way across the top, and I'm gonna play a little bit of music.
a thinner version. I think it says five mil that we run down this side, just because there's a little bit less room because you've got the digitizer cabling all down the uh, down this side. If I were you, I would. You could simply use the thicker stuff if you bought that reel uh, and just put it on there, and then just trim it afterwards all the way down, or cut it before you put it on there. Mind the cable. Too much movement on the cable and flexing can damage the cable, so just be uber uber careful. And then with a bit of it neatness, just trimming around the outside there. Try not to scratch the black because that is paint on the glass, so clearly it will scratch off. And there we go. So we're all ready for the part assembly. You've got the camera bracket there. It's all nicely in place and in centered. Again, just double check that. Sometimes they come from, from our suppliers a little bit. Yeah, need a slight reposition. First thing we do, lay them side by side and we're gonna plug the digitizer into the, the actual iPad itself. And we're also gonna connect over the home button. In fact, I think it's gonna start with the home button here. So what we're gonna do is because we've gone right up again, right up to that that button where the button goes, we can peel these off, knowing that that bracket, the home button bracket, is going to sit nicely over the home button. We get the home button from my little tray of parts. Make sure it's clean. You get some gack all the way around it, um, but yeah, give it a bit of a clean and put it in place. It sits nice in place. Make sure it's nice and square. Making sure that the the bottom of it is parallel to the, the bottom of the glass otherwise you put it all together and you turn it over and you end up with a wonky square um, so yeah that's so before you connect it just spin it make sure that button is is all nicely seated then we're going to flip over the home button once we've got this in place there's not a lot of sort of movement in uh, without breaking cables so be careful so that bottom piece there the way to line it up that bottom piece there needs to line up with the bottom of the little black square. Um, and that's that way you know that the little the little nipple, ooh, so to speak, on the <coughs> the button that you press in is in the center of the button. Otherwise you're gonna press the home button and it's not gonna connect properly with, with the actual mechanical button. There you go. So the it's almost like a little smile there, the little two eyes and the silver and, and the little grey smiley face. But again, that's really key. So if you need to lift it and put it back down, do so. Now they're bound by that home button cable. You don't want any quick movement. So you peel that off there. If there is a little bit of plastic on there, there's no, there should be no blue plastic anyway. Um, once you've installed it, we're going to slide these in. And you see those two white lines? That pretty much tells you when when those white lines are really on, on the edge of the, the actual connectors themselves, and you'll see when you're in there, um, you'll know that they're, they are as in as far as they're gonna go. This little black plastic tool we use on the back of that cable, just gently to ease it in. Once they're in, Damien uses his fingers to push those clasps down, but be bloody careful with those clasps. Um, once in place, gently touching the cable down so that any glue on the back of the cable where you peel the blue off, it sits in nicely. You can see in the corner of the digitizer where it, it almost just gently and it naturally finds its way looping into there. So we put the LCD up, we do the same thing with that cable. The cable goes in first, holding it about a 45 degree angle to slot it in. Once we know it's in, we push the clasp down and we gently push the cable down at the top so it's uh, any adhesive on the back again it just sticks gently to what's underneath it and then we're going to go for these little bits of tape that we saved we peeled them off and we just literally literally cut them on the on the edge of those little that little screw tray so that they didn't you know lose adhesive so to put them back over where they should be and again i'm a massive fan of it. if it came out of it it should go back into it gently um Oh, they're minding the, uh, the home button cable there, making sure that's out of the way before the LCD gets pushed in. Make sure that it's, it's in place. Top and bottom corners are nicely pressed in. There's no bungee cables that are going to break. Um, you know, it, it will find its own way. And again, if you have to force something, then there's a problem. 
And I always say that on all my videos. If you've got to force it, stop. Take a breath, come back to it. Four screws in each corner. Gently in, not over tightening. It's only aluminium it's going into. And they just sit the LCD down nicely. Again, if there's any real bounce, then it's stopping you from screwing them down. There's a problem. Take it out, have a look, go back. I know I yarn on, but I don't mind. I'd rather tell you a bit of useless detail that you already know, rather than not tell you at all, because there'll be someone out there that doesn't know it. And I'd rather you don't make that mistake. Home button cable. Damien here is just gently pushing it down with his finger because there's a bit of glue on the back. Sweet. He's quite happy with that. Um, and now we're going to go into the procedure where we start, again, cleaning, cleaning the LCD because once we sandwich this all together, there's not a lot of going back. nice clean cloth a microfiber cloth here something that doesn't give too much dust away because the more you wipe the more it lands on it and any stubborn bits like this adhesive that we've accidentally sort of got on here um, it smudges we use one of those alcohol wipes again um, and again I'd recommend buying a buying a few of these because alcohol kind of just melts the glue a bit because if, if you rub that with a cloth straight away you're gonna pick more adhesive up on the cloth and it's just going to leave adhesive over where you're trying to clean um, but yeah this is a real stubborn piece of glue ideally we wouldn't have got it on there but it happens so it's going to take a little bit I might speed this up so that uh, you get the gist of cleaning <laughs> one seriously stubborn dirty LCD um, but we're there uh, what we're going to do now is it optional we put the uh, the foam that you can see there's remnants of all around the uh, old screen and the LCD we put the foam back on there it's foam tape it's about half a mil wide don't actually think we have it on our site because it's pretty hard to get hold of sometimes and we put the foam on and all that does is stops any dust that is left in the iPad creeping back onto the LCD once it's all down again over time um, but yeah so we do that because you know what we like to do is the best possible job and I understand you probably do as well um, yeah but it's it's about two or three mil wide um, and it's about half a mil deep foam tape double-sided foam tape in fact and we just lay it all the way around where you can see on that LCD or when you have a look at yours just remnants of it and it kind of sticks to both sides as you pull it apart so we, we lay that down all the way around the outside of the LCD. And yeah, like I said, it's just like a dust guard. Um, and uh, yeah, getting the, getting the LCD, getting everything clean. And again, this is a customer's device. And getting it, everything clean as you sandwich those together um, is, is absolute key. And one step that you will also see is before we commit to the final stick down, we will, uh, you know, we tell it, we, we lift the digitizer gently over, we power it on. We make sure that you know it's all working because faults do happen, disconnects happen. Um, the last thing you want to do is stick it down, 
and then we'll figure out that uh, it's, there's, there's a missing area of touch or there's a faulty part or and then oh man you're just what a pain so again it's all about taking your time <music> So after positioning that foam in there and peeling the, the grain the green layer off so that it's sticky surface up as well, we're going to start the so we've tested digitizer, I can't emphasize that enough. We're going straight for the kill. But um, yeah, like I said, we, we do this day in, day out. We start peeling all of the plastic off the adhesive on the digitizer, but we leave the inner bit on. And the reason for this is that the cable for the digitizer, if you peel it off, will stick to the surface of the iPad screen, the new screen, really where you don't want it to be, because that's the surface that's supposed to be sticking to the metal. So we leave that on for now, but we will remove it. Um, yeah, so we're ready to lift over, give it the final blowout, final clean, whatever you need to. So we're gonna peel the clear layer of protection off of the back of the screen like that, and then flip the screen straight over, not giving it any chance for any dust to fall back onto the screen. Top left corner, we're gonna position, give a gentle push. Now, you never wanna squeeze this hard because it's glass and it will snap if you've got any form of intrusion. Leaving a gap at the bottom and the bottom left, and you can see that the digitizer cable is not stuck to anything and it's pointing 90 degrees to the iPad side, which means that's exactly where it pokes down. Getting some tweezers, we're gonna remove that last bit of adhesive coverage, the covering. Gently pull it out. Ooh, we've accidentally turned the iPad on, but that's cool, because that's what we're gonna be doing in a minute. And now we're ready to just gently ease it down. And you'll see that what ha should happen, again, don't force it, is that that cable should just disappear between the LCD and the casing. Gently pressing all the way around. Again, I can't emphasize gently. I say emphasize a lot, but I can't emphasize that I emphasize a lot is the fact that if you push it too hard, you will snap the glass. So there we go. Again, nice little push all the way down the side, making sure that it's flush all the way around. It should be. Depends how clean you've got it. Power's on, and then we can start testing the screen to make sure that uh, it all works fine. So there you go, you've done it. Um, here we have some classic tools, normal, uh, you can all get from our site. The, uh, the iSesmo is absolutely invaluable. Perfect tool, does everything. Um, uh, little Phillips, um, little professional or metal Phillips uh, screwdriver and some little tweezers. You can get all these tools um, for on our website, appleipodparts.com, and a plastic non-removal tool. We use, you know, it's good to have all these. They're uh, pretty handy in their own right. Um, and a screw organizer tray. Again, you can buy this on our site um, as little compartments for all the screws. So obviously we've warmed the iPad. Um, we put them in a temperature controller and we don't like heat guns because they tend to melt things. And by the time you've heated up a, a certain area, the, the heat's bled away. So we've warmed it up gently. Um, 20 minutes and a temperature controlled ovens that we have um, around about sort of 50 odd degrees. Um, not too hot, just enough to, you know, sort of melt the adhesive a little bit. So we go straight in with our SESMO. This is a really flexible, extremely thin uh, tool that's absolutely fantastic for getting into the edges. And that, you know, and it's because it's quite a wide profile, it doesn't tend to damage the plastics around um, too much either. Uh, and it's just a fantastic tool. Uh, we helped the guys develop that at uh, DOSPod and um, it's just brilliant. We use them everywhere on everything. Uh, and again, you can get it on our site. So we're separating the, um, you know, we're sort of using our fingers to sort of hold or preload the, the digitizer off while we go around the edge and just trying to break the bond. You don't want to go too far in 
uh, otherwise you go into where the LCD is uh, and you don't want to be scratching that. As you can see, it's pretty messy. iPads are a bit, you know, when it's when they're just a crack, it's not too bad. The digitizers come away, but when they're smashed like this, um, it's, it's pretty darn awkward. So it takes a long time, it's time consuming. And here we can see that uh, we've got it on a little bit of fast forward. My colleague here uh, is sort of risking his fingers. So you've got to be careful, make sure that the uh, you don't get affected by the glass and uh, you've got to be gently, we've sped this video up, we're not reckless, we don't do this thing fast. What you do need to watch out for is right in the area where the, the mute switch and the volume cable is, uh, the cable's underneath the glass, so if you go in too far you can easily snag those cables, so you've got to be extra careful, probably not probe too far in with the ISESMO or whatever tool you're using. Um, so you get an area where it's not cracked, you can work your way down, gently pulling on the digitizer, uh, not pulling on it too much, but just to pull the adhesive away and uh, you know it's nice when there's not too much for smash damage and right here you've got to be careful again there's a wi-fi cable right there uh, as you look at the ipad on the right hand side of the home button you've got to go in extremely gently and you're using the ISSMO to go between the glass of the screen and the and the the wi-fi cable and you're pushing the wi-fi cable away from the glass so that it stays with the ipad um, because what happens is if you pull that glass too far and the, the cable stuck to the glass then you're going to tear the cable straight off of the iPad. And uh, although we sell the cables on our website, so you can easily replace it, it's probably best if you don't need to. You've also got to be quite cautious around the home button as you get there. Um, there's not too much of a adhesive just around there, but uh, as you can see there, you know, too much pressure and uh, pop goes the screen. So you've got to be really careful. Um, I would recommend using gloves. Um, and sort of every, any proportion you can take. Also, obviously, the longer you take, the more the iPad cools down, and the you know the adhesive becomes effective again. So, if you need to sort of warm it up a little bit, um, then do so. So, we've got the digitizer coming away here now. Um, any sort of lift you can get, then or you know gently lift. And what you're looking to do is open it like a book, with uh, the screen coming off to the left, um, because that's where the digitizer cable is. Um, and all the way down the left hand side you see the adhesive there. Um, what you're looking to do is sort of hold the iPad down, a bit of pressure down, and then gently sort of peel the, the, the digitizer away from the adhesive. Um, uh, you've just got to be careful not to tear anything, but you know, uh, digitizer, it, you know, it's useless now anyway, so the cables, you're not your main concern, but if you're lifting it to access the battery or the LCD and the screen's okay, um, then obviously you want to want to maintain all of it, um, and it's perfectly, um, you know, an easy request to, to, to lift the digitizer and keep it in one piece. Um, it just takes a lot of patience, a bit of warmth, and and slow going really. So there we have. We've lifted the digitizer off. There's lots of bits of glass. One thing I don't recommend is that you wipe the LCD screen. It's got lots of glass all over it, and that will just scratch the LCD. It's best to sort of shake or blow off the LCD if you can, and obviously remove the, all, all the uh, bits and bobs, that, you know, all the pieces of glass that you can gently and slowly. Um, so here we've, uh, we're retrieving the parts off of the digitizer, the smashed digitizer, um, that we're gonna need to put onto the new digitizer. The home button, as you saw there, was a bracket. Um, that bracket is just stuck down with the same glue that everything's held on to. So you peel that off and the home button comes out. And then this is the little camera bracket that uh, we're replacing as well. That, that will stay with the digitizer and again it's stuck down with adhesive that you just need to get the ISSMO behind and peel it. Or it's, it's still on the camera if it's all smashed around there. So you retrieve that as well. Um, it's, it's got the same adhesive on as, as the rest of the iPad essentially. Um, so we'll retrieve those bits. Uh, as Apple, as I always say on all my videos, they're there for a reason. Don't leave them out if you can help it. Um, yeah, they are there for a reason and uh, they need to go back. So we're going to remove the, the LCD now to get the, the cable for the digitizer. The LCD has four screws, one in each corner, um, and they're, they're sort of cross-head. So you've got one there, got one under, the, under a bit of adhesive and some glass there. Um, right about there and the other two corners as well um, they come out quite easily and they're you know they're the same size in those four corners 
but we want to keep them separate for any other screws that we may take out. Um, so we put them in a little screw organizer tray. Again, you can get all these parts, trays, you know, accessories uh, and tools on our website, appleipodparts.com. So while well, my colleague does that, um, obviously, as I was saying earlier, there's lots of shards of glass around. We need it spotless. Um, we use a combination of a little air blower, um, a little airbrush compressor. That's pretty good and pretty handy. Um, also, you know, we sort of uh, we use a small vacuum cleaner to remove glass as well, um, as best you can. You, you can blow them and blow the bits off. You've got to make sure that they go into a bin. You don't want to blow lots of shards of glass into the air. So you've got to be, you've got to be careful. So we've got our spudger, the world famous spudger there. Um, and in this case, once all your screws are out, you can just gently lift the LCD. And again, it comes away like a book from, from right to left almost because the cable is, is down the left side where the, the digitizer cable is. Um, again, all I always say, if it, if it takes too much lifting, then there's going to be a, you know, a sticking point somewhere. So revisit that. Don't, don't force anything. Um, because it will just break. So there's the LCD cable. It's a pretty hefty cable. Um, it can come off both ends and you've got a little metal clasp. We're going to lift it at the, the board end, pop the spudger under that small uh, metal bezel there, and then just use the bezel to gently rock the connector out there and it comes away. Easy as that. We're going to remove the LCD completely out. Um, it's easy to clean the iPad then and we can get to the cable for the digitizer without risking the LCD. The, uh, the digitizer has two clasps. Um, again, gently lift these two black clasps up. They're easy to break. Once you've broken them, they're difficult to put back together. If they're broken, broken, then you could be stuffed. And then the digitizer cable, it pulls out that way. This has been a change before. Sometimes the digitizer cable is stuck down to the board just above those connectors. So you might have to lift the cable gently and again, I can emphasize gently because you do not want to tear anything off those boards. Um, so there you go. The, the iPad there can now be cleaned, removed all the adhesive. And I think we're going to peel the frame off as well. Now the little black plastic frame from around it. So it's just a big cleanup job, really, um, using whatever tools you've got. If you need to rewarm it to, to sort of free up the glass, then do so. And it'll lift, the adhesive will come away better. Um, obviously we do this day in day out um, but just go gently that's all I can say really um, you know you don't want to be slipping and snagging cables and snapping all sorts because you're in a world of pain then um, so yeah just, just sort of take it easy and do what you can I've been uh, known to ramble people on my YouTube channel say that I do ramble but I'd rather give you more information than not um, especially when you watch those I mean I've been a victim when I first started out watching those videos that, uh, that you know, someone's done rather hastily. And uh, before you know it, you, you've lifted something, you've snapped a cable, and lo and behold, it's not mentioned on their video. I'd rather mention way more than bore you to death to, than you snap a cable. Um, even though snapping a cable is good for business, I'd rather you didn't. So let's speed it up. Um, obviously, the cleaning of all the adhesive. You can peel the glue off the Wi-Fi cable like so, but just keep your finger on it down so that doesn't, the Wi-Fi cable doesn't pull off and snap anything. And uh, yeah, generally, make, just make sure you clean every bit you can. So we're going to remove the, the plastic frame because it's fairly mullered. Um, it's, it's literally just stuck down again with this sort of similar adhesives. So all we do is just get a little sort of spatula tool and under there and it just peels straight off and uh, just removing all traces of it really <coughs> so it comes away it comes away quite nicely and if there's any glue that's left behind we can peel that off as well and um, it's your choice how you put the new frame back down um, you can use slight dobs of uh, super glue um, or you can sort of get some of this adhesive from our site and just cut it to shape and uh, yeah the new frame will sit down quite nicely um, what we tend to do is obviously bang any dents out the corners as well, which again, there's no real way of doing that per se. We, uh, we just use some ch shape tools and just gently, um, knock the dents out. Otherwise that will stop the frame going in and the glass going in. 
So here's a new frame, you can get that on our appliedparts.com and it will sit in nicely once it's the right way around. There's a few notches in and out, so it has, there's only one way it can go. And um, it's a case of just sticking that down. Uh, yeah, so it sort of fits nicely. We're going to use some pretty strong super glue. Um, and it's, it's not sort of ultra runny, it's quite a thick super glue. And uh, just got a dip, dab onto a little plastic bag. And then we're just going to use a little, um, you know, just something thin, like a little flat blade screwdriver or something, just to dab little bits on. You don't want it to be squirting glue and it going everywhere. Um, that just make a right mess. So what we're trying to do is we will put glue probably around about a third of the iPad to start with, so that we know the frame's in place and we know it fits. Instead of trying to do the whole thing all in one go, you can end up with it gluing in all sorts of different places and not fully home. So uh, we'll put glue all the way along the top, um, quite sparingly, and down the sides a little bit, and then sit the frame down. And what you're gonna do is, uh, as you sit the frame down, um, it has slots in here, as you can see there, for different places. And we're gonna push it into the corners, up to the edges, um, and that way we can make sure that it bonds down and dries. And it, you know, because once, if this is glued in the wrong place, your glass won't fit. So with that in place, we're then going to do sort of around the bottom edge and then the sides, so on and so forth, and just hold it in place and then it glues nicely in place. Uh, you just want to make sure that it's pushed into the corners, that you've removed any dents um, as best you can so that the glass won't be impeded when you put that in um, because there'll be no give in the glass, obviously. So we're ready for the glass, and um, we're happy that the frame's in place, it's all glued down. It's all clean, there's no glue left, there's no glass left. Um, so yeah, it's, it's ready for the digitizer. So again, digitizer, I mean, on our site we do the reproduction and the genuine. Um, to be honest, the reproduction is genuine quality. Um, we don't stand for anything less anyway. Uh, so this is fresh out of stock. Um, so obviously it's got a film on the inside that you can, you know, you, you probably, unless we don't put our peel here sticker, you probably wouldn't know it's got a film on it. It's that, you know, it's that tidily put on. There's no air bubbles underneath it. And we we have to put that peel here because uh, you get a lot of uh, people leave it on there. And obviously you don't want that. So as you peel all the little bits and bobs of the, canable, uh, the, sort of the cable and the connector protectors on there, um, easy for me to say. And um, yeah, it, Draw the cable out gently, no forcing of anything. And it, it, you know, they're designed to sit in place wherever you put them. Now, this is quite tricky, the, the cable's quite flimsy, and it's a case of just gently coaxing the connector. It'll only go one way, and you can see that sat there. It's a, gently push it into the connector, and on, on that cable, I don't know if you can see it, but there's two white lines, and those light, white lines pretty much match up to where the connector starts. Um, and then we just use the, the sort of a, an end of a tool just to gently pull them home and then flip those two clasps down really, really gently. Um, don't force anything because if you, if you break those, then that just, that's the nightmare. Um, and again, just make sure that they're fully home, otherwise your digitizer won't work fully. So the LCD is, this is quite a stiff cable. You need the LCD right above it. It'll, it sits into that connector quite positively. There's any way, you know, sort of one way it can go. And then once it's fully home, just use a plastic tool to just flick that clasp down. Um, we've removed the glass from the LCD. There's just some dust on it that we'll remove just before we stick it down. A bit of a test to make sure that uh, it all powers up. Um, my colleague here is just... Uh, just going to wait to see that it all is well, that nothing, you know, that it works, it talks, and the digitizer functions to a degree as well. We tend to uh, test them quite comprehensively as best we can, obviously, laying the digitizer over, not fully pressing it down, make sure that there's no dead spots on the screens or anything like that. Uh, a good way of testing this is to um, swipe down from the top. And the bottom, and that will bring the eye, you know, sort of the icons down and then up, uh, and then put it on its side and do the same. And 
you're testing the extremities then as well. Um, obviously, obviously they sat down. Now uh, we can go through the process of popping the four screws back in, one in each corner. Um, on this replacement, there's only the four screws we've taken out, so that's uh, that's not too difficult. So we can put those back in, um, and then yeah, give it a good clean up. Really, essentially, is one of the most time-consuming parts. Um, is the fact that it is just cleaning it. We use a lint-free, uh, lint-free cloth there, um, and. We also use sort of isopropyl wipes to make sure that the LCD is nice and clean. And then we wipe it down again and so on and so forth. Um, really tricky to, to, you know, to clean it, but it's, you know, the last thing you want is fingerprints and dust underneath the screen. Um, and that's why the digitizers that we sell are, are pretty darn good as far as under the clear plastic layers. They're pretty clean um, need very, very minimal sort of wiping down. You can get some crap digitizers and really cheap parts um, that you know you peel the, the plastic off and it's covered in crap and and fingerprints and stuff and you, you're into cleaning that again it just you know we strive to make sure that our parts genuine or not um, are, you know the best possible quality um, all around really what we need to do is obviously fit these parts back onto the digitizer now what we've done on this little bracket is on the back side of it we've just put some a um, couple of tiny bits of the adhesive tape that we have on our site, applipodparts.com. Um, or there's, any, you know, there shouldn't be anything left over when when you lay down the uh, the adhesive, the pre-cut adhesive on the, the iPad. So we also have some sheets of the stuff, um, small sheets that that you can buy separately. And we also put two pieces on the back of this, um, which should come on the pre-cuts actually on those sort of. I don't know what shape they are really, but um, either side of that button, we place the adhesive on there, and um, and also on on the home button, you can see at the bottom there's like a a plate that comes off the bottom. There's a tiny bit of adhesive we put on that to stop the home button spinning, um, and that sticks itself down to the digitizer. Um, sometimes you can retrieve the adhesive comes off with these, and and it is good to go back on, but other times they all bubbles up and it's non-sticky, so. What we're doing here is just removing any trace. These bubbles will get in the way if you put new adhesive on there, and, and you know, just it's all about making sure that it's nice and clean and prepared properly. Um, otherwise, it's just going to look rubbish, and also it will stop it from working. And um, things like that, you know, if, if it's not spaced properly, then you're into um, you know things not home button not working, this and the other. So there's a pre-cut adhesive set. Uh, for the iPad 2. Again, you can get these on our website, appleipodparts.com. You can see there, it's pre-cut to this little home button bracket. So you can either use tweezers or your fingers, but just don't, don't get your fingers on the glue itself. It just stops it being sticky. Um, or try not to. Uh, I think tweezers would have been preferable. And then push that down, and then you can peel off the back end now it's really key, and you you know you might think as you know this goes in any way, but where this bracket goes, and if you can take a picture of your old digitizer as it comes off for the location of this bracket, then do so because it needs to go in back on the exact same place we used to do in this day in day out, so we know where it needs to go. But if it's any if it's a millimeter too high or too low, then the contacts, those two little gold contacts you see on the back, they won't line up with the iPad itself, and the home button won't work. Um, so this bottom edge, we tend to go by, this bottom edge lines up with the bottom of that black square. See that black square in the middle? We tend to line up, so you've got the light grey, um, there you go, you can just see the light grey underneath at the bottom, and the, that's pretty much how it lines up, and that's a good reference. Um, so you see the grey, then what we do is, we go around the other side, we stick it down, we go around the other side and we make sure that the home button is actuating and clicking properly and uh, it all feels nice. Now we're into uh, making sure the rest is prepared by putting down the adhesive strips. They're relatively self-explanatory but obviously this video should tell you where or should show you roughly where they go. Um, there's a lot of 
different people's, you know, people saying stick it to the iPad or the digitizer. I think Apple stick this to the digitizer first, um, and then it sticks to the iPad. Whereas we put it on the iPad, it, it's almost preference. These pre-cut strips are designed to go on the back of the digitizer, and you have to sort them. Make they work both ways, but the way we lay it out, um, it works. But the way it's cut it is almost designed. It's, it's designed to go on the digitizer, basically. But to be honest, we found after you know doing lots of these, we found that it's easier to put on the iPad itself, just because you know where the edges are and you can get it laid down properly. Whereas if you put it on the glass, it's just a little bit harder to to get lined up. And to be honest, the what the methods we use, make sure and it's you know the, the basics are make sure it's clean, make sure it's got adhesive all the way around. Um, it, it sticks nonetheless. Um, so you know it, it's personal preference, um, but it's easier to line it up and make sure that we get proper seals when it goes on the the iPad itself. So we're laying it down. I know chat. I know, I know folks. This is a lengthy video, and there's a lot of me rambling, probably more than normal, but. There's an awful lot to an iPad replacement properly. You get shops offering to do this in iPad replacement in half an hour, this and the other. Well, to be honest, it takes 20 minutes to heat it up to get the thing off. Um, so, you know, it, it's slow and steady. It gets the job done properly and then you don't end up with it lifting and, and all sorts of problems like that. Uh, a lot of, and I speak to a lot of people that ask us questions about, you know, they, they've done it, they do it for a living. But they, you know, they have digitizers lifting up, or they've had bad experiences with suppliers with rubbish parts, rubbish adhesive. Um, there is an awful lot of that. There's there's an awful lot of um, you know sort of low grade parts and adhesive out there. But a lot of it is in preparation, making sure the surfaces are clean, making sure that you just do a good job. Um, it really is. It's it's that simple. Um, and make sure that you watch this video fully before you try yours, to be honest. Um, there's a lot of pitfalls and we try and, um, you know, not shortcut anything so that we can tell you all the, the pitfalls. Um, so they were just trimming the adhesive around, make sure it all fits, make sure that there's, there's sort of, most of the edges are catered for. And um, so that, it, you know, it stays down. So as a reminder, I apply podparts.com, tools, accessories, guides, and help. If you want to help, leave a comment. There's a little contact us tab on the left. Drop us a line. We're, we're always happy to help. So in the last throws of putting digitizers there, we see that we fill in all the gaps that the, uh, the pre-cut doesn't uh, cater for um, with some uh, sort of other tape. Like I said, you can buy the extra tape from our site. This is the final cleanup. Make sure that all of the old foam is off the LCD because this is something that we do that pretty much, I don't know anybody else that does this, is that we fit foam around the LCD and that stops the LCD and the digitizer from touching and it comes with it on, but when you remove it, the digitizer, the foam crumbles away and I don't think anybody, I don't know of anybody that replaces this. Again, this stuff you can get on our site is the proper foam, cut to size um, and there's four strips top you know it goes all the way around the LCD um, and it yeah it, it creates a bit of a dust barrier but it also stops the LCD if there's any sort of discrepancy issues with putting it back together it stops the LCD from meeting the glass and you what happens is you get like an oil mark um, between the glass and the LCD that's highly annoying uh, customers will reject it and um, yeah, it is just where the glass is, the two glass surfaces touch, and it, it's uh, this. This is a nice little tweak. Like I said, not many people use it. Um, we sell the foam, and we always use it, and um, yeah, and we fit it together. Um, the personal preference whether you put all four strips all the way around or whether you put just put two strips down the sides um, depends what model it is to whether or not we use the two or the four strips. Um, so then you're into the bit of the lengthy cleanup process, really, and making sure it's dust free. There we go, we get a little compressor, we give it a blow, um, and it's all ready to go together. So obviously we peeled the backing off the foam, um, two foam strips down the side, 
and we're going to peel the adhesive um, backing off as well and the key is not to touch the adhesive once you've done it. Um, you can uh, sometimes, I mean you, you can peel the adhesive off and then put it in, back in the oven at a lower temperature just to make sure that the, the sort of the adhesive is, is more tacky. Uh, what we do is we do that after we stick it down. So final cleanup, real ball ache, well worth doing, you know, bit of an air, bit of lint-free cloth, and then we're ready to peel the backing of the digitizer off. This is a very last minute thing, and we're almost straight off and then straight over with the digitizer to prevent any dust from, from getting in. Uh, it's immensely difficult. You'll always get, oh, there's my colleague. Um, you'll always get a little bit in there. And what we do, we go in with the top first because there's no cables there. Sit the top in right up against the plastic and then, and this is a bit of a shame, it's off screen. Hopefully we'll pull it back on. If there's any springiness in the glass going down, you know that you've caught the cable, so you need to lift it away. If it finds its home and, it, in, and where it slots in, the digitizer will sit right down all the way home perfectly. Um, and yeah, so sorry we didn't uh, catch the right, the, you know, the detail of it folding on camera, but um, I hope for my explanation and you seeing it as well and taking your time, can't insist that you take enough time on this um, as much as you can. You'll see when it goes down, it, it's, you know, it fits properly. Um, so once that's home, you're looking at the glass is fully home. There's, there's Damien. Um, the glass is fully home. And then you can do it one last test whereby you test the home button to make sure it comes on. Uh, you're testing the power button to make sure it comes on um, because the adhesive's not fully set or anything like that. So you could always peel it off and uh, reseal if need be.